Before we begin, thank you very much to... Please tell me that Beast Machines was just a very bad dream for joining the Patreon campaign. Unfortunately, no. It's the reality we have to accept. Beast Machines actually happened. I'm sorry. We'll get through it together. Don't worry. It can't hurt us anymore. But thank you very much for the support. Thank you for joining up the Patreon campaign. Do appreciate it. So I did mention last, I did mention yesterday that Advent Versus would be returning this year for December. Um, I'm going to try and film the whole thing in advance and do a master cut for my Patreon. So anyone $5 and up will be able to see the entire month of video uh, on day one. That's the plan anyway. Uh, but I, have, I think I've given myself enough lead time to be able to assure that. So you know, i got some stuff coming for you. Okay. Speaking of stuff that is on the way, we have a new list of leaked stuff that is going to become available to us hopefully soon. Well, these are all computer listings, the, that kind of leak. So we don't even have actual images of any of this product yet. We just know that somewhere in between the stores and Hasbro HQ, an agreement has been made that this will exist someday. So... We've got a few to go through. I think it's just enough to warrant its own video. And there are a few here that are actually worth discussing because they do lead to some interesting possibilities. So for starters, the first one that set, that set off my brain on this list is Cybertron Cannonball. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that out of everything Cybertron did... Uh, in the in the realm of repaints, because they did a ton of different repaints in that line. Every figure, I think, outside of like maybe Dark Boss was remold was repainted at some point. This is absolutely, I think, the most successful one. This is the one everyone went nuts over. Everyone loves the green skeleton on the side, the the black, gold, and purple coloration, the the pirate theme. I think it all is. Uh, I think it's all just like the most popular thing that Hasbro just came up with out of nowhere. Now, what's interesting about this for me is that there's really nothing that really indicates what this is going to be made from. It's a deluxe class cannonball. That's what the listing states. So what mold? Now, guys, I'll tell you right now, uh, this is from the Star Seeker capsule. We'll get to that in a bit, but it does mean that it will be a, it'll most likely be a retool of some kind. And we have not heard anything about a Cybertron or even an Armada Red Alert being on the way. So we might be in a detritus situation where the, like the, the obvious repaint comes out first and the legacy character comes out later. No clue, but for now it does lead to some possibilities if it's the stuff that we have available. Uh, this toy has been done, like Cannonball has been done a few times in the past. Uh, some conceptually, some actually did make it. As long as he used to be some kind of rescue vehicle, like, like an ambulance or like a first responder truck. Uh, as long as it's somewhere in that vein, I think it's acceptable for Cannonball. Uh, that does lead me to a few choices. One would be the crankcase mold. That does seem to be a pretty obvious choice for Cannonball. I think people are getting exhausted with this one, though. We've gotten it several times now. Now, granted, they've done some interesting things with retooling for it. So it is in the realm of possibility. Uh, this one, it's, I mean, if we're just going with, like, the molds that are currently available, this is the most obvious one. The other one that struck me, though, and the other one that, like, the one that I crossed my fingers and hoped for... Uh, is the Jurassic Park, uh, the, the, the JP-95, I believe. I can. That's the weirdest names. It's the weirdest names. I thought for sure, I think a lot of people thought for sure, this would end up being Armada Red Alert at some point. That's like the silhouette is just too perfect for it. But I think with what Hasbro is doing with the Armada Legacy characters, like we've seen... Uh, you know, now we have Megatron and Starscream, we have Hotshot and Optimus Prime. I feel like they are trying to keep some semblance of the original scales. So I don't think we're going to see a red alert any lower than a Voyager size. That said, this would have still worked. 
this still would have looked really, really good. And it's a mold they never reuse, which is baffling to me. So this one is absolutely a potential. I could absolutely see them using this mold. Uh, but let's be honest, the crankcase is far more likely. It's just way easier to retool into whatever they need. But still, uh, Cannonball is always cool. Cannonball is always really, really cool. So I don't think I'm going to argue no matter what it is. As long as it comes out in that, you know, charcoal gray, like that almost black gray color. It's got the green skeleton down the side. I think I'll be happy with it. Uh, what's interesting of thing about it is, like I mentioned, it's a Star Seeker, which is Thundertron's crew. Now, we do know there are listings for a Star Seeker capsule at Walmart. So this is going to be what's replacing uh, the Toxitron collection, which, by the way, I still have never seen in person, ever. Um, I have one of those toys here at the shop for sale, uh, the Sideswipe. I have, uh, I have Mirage at home friend of mine in Australia had to get dead end for me, so I had some hope of the G2 uh, Stunicons. And that's basically it. <laughs> that's basically it. Um, I've seen, you know, like, I think TFCon. I saw more at TFCon than I've ever seen in person. That's sad. Um, so hopefully this one gets a little bit more widespread because there are some interesting names on it. If you hadn't seen the leaks that included the Star Seekers, it did include names like Filch from RID 2015. So uh, I don't know if they're going to take uh, like Earthspark uh, Nightshade and redo them into Filch. Or if they're going to do that with uh, the Air Razor mold. That's another possibility. Um what else? What else is on that list? I, I want to say uh, Farrick was on the list, so expect a Cyclonus repaint out of that one. Uh, it's an interesting list. It's an interesting list, and there was one blank on there, so the blank, the, the blank turned out to be Cannonball. So that's what we're getting. We're getting pirates. We're getting Transformer pirates, which will be an interesting idea in and of itself, because um, it's going to be have it should have a lot more original characters. Because we've been kind of restricted to like certain themes with the last two, I'm I'm curious. I'm curious how it's gonna. I'm curious how the figure is gonna look. But that's then. Those are past leaks. Those are old news leaks. We want new news leaks. How about the next one? Masterpiece Brawl is confirmed. Most obvious one, right? Absolutely the most obvious one. If you include the tiny little Scorponok that comes with uh, Blackout then, yeah, you're looking at every Decepticon now being represented from the 2007 movie in Masterpiece. Uh, he's the only boy left. So you, you basically, like, for you Bayverse fans, that set's going to be complete on your shelf now, which I know is really important to a lot of people. I'm really curious how the design is going to translate the Masterpiece level. We saw the Studio Series, and the Studio Series isn't bad. There is some very weird structure to Brawl, some areas of him that are very thin, considering how big and heavy he looks. I'm really wondering how that's going to translate on the masterpiece level. And because it does seem to be kind of an imposing challenge design wise. I mean, he's supposed to turn into a tank. What? How many solid plates of armor do you see on this toy? Not a lot. Not a lot. Also, size. Size is another thing. Now, we've had Blackout and now um, Bone Crusher on the way. Um, here's your size chart. So, the boy is going to have to be about the same size as Bone Crusher, but maybe a little bit bigger in vehicle mode. He's about the same length and height as Bone Crusher's vehicle mode. We have to remember that's a Minesweeper truck, not a tank. The tank is way wider. So that's going to be an interesting design challenge to come up with something that compacts and or or, you know, or or rather something that expands out when it turns into the vehicle and then compacts into the robot mode to get the to get the scaling right. Interesting design challenge, but I know you know it's Takara. If anyone can do it, they can do it. So that's gonna that's gonna be the fun of that one. Um, you'll notice in this listing is that everything is weirdly enough an exclusive to one place or another. The, you know, the Star Seekers are Walmart exclusive. Masterpiece usually ends up being Target exclusive or Pulse exclusive in the U.S. 
And those aren't the only ones that we have as an exclusive here. So next up on the list, and I think this is the most obvious one in the world, Dino King. Now, we pretty much called this. Like the second we saw how the Dinobots uh, were arranged in the core class combiner, we pretty much knew exactly that what was happening. This was going to be Dino King at some point. You know, the Triceratops is the chest. The T-Rex is the leg. We added an Ankylosaurus, which I'm not going to complain about. But yeah, there is a reason for that, too. So all of the Dino King set is confirmed. Like we're, we're getting Dino King. Obvi that was pretty much obvious. However, uh, what we didn't know was delivery. We didn't know exactly how this was actually going to be sold. If they were going to parse them out the way they did the core uh, Dinobots and just release them a little bit of time over the course of a year, or if we were going to get some like multi-pack as a store exclusive. No, the listing for this one is actually um, uh, Pecan DTC Dino King. PCON meaning PulseCon, and DTC standing for direct to consumer. So Hasbro will be selling this one directly to you as a PulseCon exclusive in the future. Um, it might mean we might have a bit of a wait before we get a hold of it, but you know what? Kind of worth it. Kind of worth it. Because uh, just, just as a refresher, just as a refresher, um, the Volcanicus did turn out way better than the original Volcanicus did. I'm just going to say that straight up. And I think individually, there are ones that are weaker. Sludge is on the weak side, right? But a lot of these little tiny Dinobots are actually pretty impressive. And all six together is a really cool set to look at. So to get an entire team, uh, you know, redone into a character that is known to combine makes this all the better. The fun part is going to be how they colorize the whole thing. I think the priority is going to be making sure that that combined mode looks like Dino King. So you're not going, don't count on seeing the shell colors, even though, you know, that's what, you know, that's because if you've never seen the G1 Dino King, they're based off of Monstructor, which, and the only element of them that are dinosaur are the shells that they came in as tiny little pretenders. So you're not going to see the shell colors on these Dino modes. You're just not. Uh, they're going to focus to make sure that it actually looks like Dino King, which ultimately I think, yeah, that's the right way to go about it. So it's going to be a very new take on the on uh, Dino King. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it because I actually really like the team. And I'm, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to actually see this. All right. What else we got? We do have another Optimus Prime on the way. No surprise there. Um, I'm going to bet this is a Target exclusive. I'm going to bet this one is going to be a Target exclusive. And um, pretty easy easy uh, ex explanation why. Um, it does replace a previous listing that was for a Buzzworthy Bumblebee Studio Series Leader Class reissue. Uh, so um, we know that that one did come out. Like, like for the... Uh, like I don't know like which one they were intending that one to be. We do know that the move that the the movie like the Dark of the Moon one that re-release did happen. It evaporated because that's such a high demand toy. But it is going to be Target exclusive and it's going to be Target collaborative, which means I'm expecting this one to actually be the Volvo Optimus Prime. Because I think they're going to do what they try to do with Amazon and actually make a delivery truck out of this. Um, I mean, it makes the most sense to me. Because it is listed as a collaborative figure rather than just an exclusive figure. Um, the reason why, the reason why you put a little bit more into this is because the listing is actually uh, Transformer Generation Leader Optimus Prime and Autobot Bullseye. If you're unaware, Bullseye is this pupper it's the mascot of target so they're doing some kind of autobot version of yeah a bullseye i don't know there's no information on this whatsoever we don't know if it's just going to be like a little figurine that you know happens to you know you know sit around with the optimus prime uh we don't know if it's going to be like you know um some kind of transforming figure itself 
You know, it could, you know, it could be Minicon style. It could be MicroMaster style. It could be Target Master style, which would be appropriate, wouldn't it? <laughs> Target Master Bullseye. It's just a dog that just like flipped out guns for Prime to, to blast with. I'm not sure if Hasbro, I'm not sure if Target would sign off on their mascot turning into a set of guns. So I'm really curious exactly what they're actually thinking with this. Maybe it could be a forklift. A little transforming forklift to like load up the load up the truck, maybe? I don't know. It's gonna be a goofy one. It's gonna be a goofy one, but sometimes that could lead to really fun stuff and really interesting weird ones. Okay. So there's a few more reveals left that we get to sit and speculate on. We're gonna get the most exciting one. We're saving the most exciting one for last. So are you ready? Uh, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. I don't know how they kept it under wraps. We're getting Classic Hero Teams Optimus Primal. <laughs> a toy we've already gotten, but the listing is brand new. But the listing is brand new. Uh, because it's a new listing, I, I kind of hope it's at least a new repaint or if it's uh, a new uh, iteration, which a different version of Primal. Can you imagine if they just randomly did a Beast Machines Primal out of this? Um, or like a Transmetal. I think it'd be hilarious if they just randomly did a Transmetal Optimus Primal like this. More than likely, it's just a new release, probably. A, maybe a packaging refresh? I don't know. This is a, it's a weird line, but I'm kind of surprised it's still going. All the stores around here don't stock it anymore. I uh, The last time I saw any classic Heroes team was actually at Ross <laughs> on clearance for like four bucks. Still haven't found the Megatron, by the way. The, the, the Gator Megatron? Still nowhere to be found. That one, that one is like in stupid rare for some reason. But these get re released all the time, so this isn't surprising. The more interesting one is the fact that Mirage is now on the list too. So there's going to be a Classic Heroes Mirage, which is interesting only because Classic Heroes team sticks to the most major of Transformer characters. So to trickle down into Mirage, a little more interesting. But then again, Rise of the Beast raises his uh, raises his credits just a little bit. So, Mirage might be a little bit more of a mainstay for a few years here. But, of course, that's not the biggest one. Of course, that's not the biggest one. I wouldn't leave you on, you know, play school toys. Nope. The new G.I. Joe collaborative has leaked. We now know the next transforming G.I. Joe Transformer. It's going to be based off the Triple T, which is one of those weird army vehicles G.I. Joe came up with because they needed something in the mid-range vehicles that kids could actually afford with their allowances so you have what appears to be uh the cockpit section of a one-seater helicopter stuck to some tank treads however it is the vehicle of sergeant slaughter uh so you're dealing with a very popular gi joe character here and because of the size it does make sense to actually do as a gi joe transformer this one shouldn't be as cost expensive as things uh that we've seen uh in the past for this line you know um like because we're, we're doing like the thunder machine as sound wave and that's over a hundred dollars i think because it's a huge vehicle you know megatron was 90 bucks because the hiss tank was full size so this one should be a little bit more budget friendly and you know Coming in with a brand new Sergeant Slaughter figure, not a bad proposition. I actually, actually looking forward to this. Um, it does also come with Leatherneck too, which is actually appropriate because Leatherneck is the other GI Joe that appears on the box of the original release. So they don't even have to; they they can just recreate the artwork. I think it's funny that like if they're trying to recreate the '80s artwork, they almost have to include all the figures that are shown as part of it, just to make sure the box is complete and they can actually have like the proper vintage art the question however is who is it going to be what transformer character are they actually pulling in order to release as a collaborative figure and it's going to be cup which is a really like number one okay like it's not a random pull because it's sergeant cup and sergeant slaughter it's the old war hero you know it makes perfect sense what doesn't make sense here is the fact that every G.I. Joe Transformer figure we've seen so far has relied on the name value of the Transformer attached to it. Megatron, Bumblebee, Soundwave. It's big deal characters turning into G.I. Joe vehicles, so they're using the popularity of the characters to kind of bolster these 
random collaborative toys that, you know, may or may not have worked. This is a real test of if this concept works or not, because Cup is not a major character, you know, not compared to those three I just mentioned. So if this one can sell, then they can get away with just about anything. Thing. They can do just about any Transformer character with any G.I. Joe vehicle and actually make it work. You know, that's the real test here. Uh, if anything, it's the first time I've seen one of these G.I. Joe collaboratives kind of depend on the name popularity of the G.I. Joe character rather than the Transformer character. Because while Baroness is a really popular G.I. Joe character. She kind of pales in notoriety compared to Megatron. Uh, but here we're dealing with Sergeant Slaughter, who is not only one of the most popular G.I. Joes, he's also a popular, you know, pro wrestler of the 80s and early 90s. He's a household name for a lot of people for one reason or another. So if this one sells, it might be because of G.I. Joe collectors and because of wrestling collectors which makes this a fascinating test. So, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And, yeah, the, the Triple T is a nice, solid vehicle. Simple. So, the figure, as a result, should be, you know, at least on the more solid side compared to what we've seen. But those are the reveals. I hope you have fun speculating along with me and leave your speculations in the description, in the comments below, uh, just in case I missed anything. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports you mean the world to me. And I will see you next time. We parlay with the captain. You think a werecroc is going to listen to elvish rules of piracy? Of course it would be Got the freaking elves cool. that... that invented parlay i had to think of a quick replacement for the french <laughs> <laughs> oh.